the dark. Thank you again for checking in. As you can see today, I want to talk a little bit about my typewriter, uh, this Jewett number no. four. It's actually from 1897. So this, this, this little gem is, what's that, 124 years old, which is uh, amazing. But before we get to this typewriter, as always, we need to do a little bit of a, a history lesson, which means we have to go all the way back to 1883. Now that's about 10 years after Scholes and Remington have, have filed the first real patents for the typewriting machine, the typewriter. Um, by 1883, uh, a, a number of other companies are, start, are starting to, uh, I guess, take an interest in finding, uh, filing patents and designs are, some are successful, some are not. And the typewriter itself is sort of finding uh, its reason to, to exist. But anyway, 1883, this cat named Henry Orpin, he files a patent for, um, I don't know what you call it, but basically like a dual carriage uh, typewriter that as you're typing, it actually would create uh, a duplicate or two uh, letters, if you will, at the same time. And at that time, not, not very practical, I think from an idea standpoint, it, it's very interesting. Um, but at this time, I'm not sure anybody sees the practicality behind it. Well, uh, again, uh, Orpin is filing a lot, lots and lots of patents. So about a year later, he files a patent uh, for a single carriage, uh, which gets closer to this, with, with uh, upper and lower case. This doesn't have a, a shift. Uh, again, not too super successful. And this guy is in St. Louis, Missouri. He keeps filing patents, tweaking things, stealing things, as everyone does. Uh, but in Des Moines, Iowa, in about 1895, this other cat named uh, Adolphus Dennis, uh, he files a patent for something very, very similar to, to this, called a, a duplex one. Uh, well, here, take a look at this picture. see the similarities but this the idea behind uh, his duplex one was whoever was typing could actually type two letters at the same time uh, you can kind of see that, that that keyboard was broke up into quadrants uh, so if someone wanted to type the word this they could type a T and an H at the same time for their left hand and an I and an S with their right hand so if someone could type a hundred words a minute on this duplex one, they could arguably type 200 words a minute. Well, again, great idea on paper, but as a matter of practicality, if you're trying to type a sentence like, oh, I don't know, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, your brain doesn't process how to type uh, two letters at a time. It, it, it just, it's a miserable, miserable thing. But uh, Dennis is, you know, unrelenting. This other fellow uh, named George Jewett uh, are working together again uh, in Iowa. And Jewett owns a lumber company, but he files uh, or creates a uh, typewriter company in 1890. Um, and basically, I, I don't know that anybody knows exactly, but, but Dennis and Jewett start working together. Uh, Jewett has come out with a typewriter originally called an American Standard which Remington frowns upon because of the word standard, threatens litigation, but he kind of comes out with a typewriter, I think called the Jewett One. Uh, oh, uh, I think like 1892 or so. Uh, and again, uh, getting back to Dennis, his duplex one is a failure, his duplex two, um, he sort of drops the idea of the two, the two letters at the same time and creates essentially something very, very similar to this. Take a look at this picture. So you can see one of the obvious differences is the space bar is still shifted um, over to the right, uh, different from the Jewett. But the duplex two eventually becomes the Jewett one, uh, or the Jewett two. Uh, and, and the duplex sort of 
disappears from history. And as I previously stated, obviously Mr. Jewett, he abandons the American Standard name and just names a typewriter after himself. Um, again, the, this number four model came out in 1897. Uh, they did five models in total. I believe the number five model came out in 1902. And by 1910, the Jewett Company had sold its, uh, sold its shares and its company essentially to Underwood by 1910. But take a look at this picture. Uh, this is actually from Des Moines, Iowa. This is the original uh, building that uh, Mr. Jewett made his typewriters. Kind of cool. And I'll show you here in a second some ads. Uh, the typewriter itself was very, very popular. And again, what makes this typewriter unique, um, again, you've got uh, capital letters, lowercase level letters, there's no shift bar, and it's what's known as an understrike typewriter. You can't actually see what you're typing. You actually have to lift this carriage up to see what's being typed. But um, we'll give you some more details on that in a second. But take a look, here's a couple of ads uh, from the time period, and when we come back, we'll take a little closer look at this fellow. Okay, so you saw the pictures of the duplex typewriters and uh, uh, the Jewett Typewriter Company's uh, office. thought that was kind of interesting. One thing I hadn't mentioned yet uh, actually was there were two typewriter repairmen that would come to fame for uh, their automobiles. The Dutzenberg brothers were actually uh, typewriter repairmen for the Jewett Typewriter Company uh, once upon a time. And obviously they left the typewriter business and went on to incredible fame, uh, making one-off automobiles for the rich and powerful. But anyway, so here's the Jewett number four typewriter. And as I mentioned, uh, you can sort of see some similarities between the duplex, and the duplex two. Uh, this shift bar was obviously over to the right, but essentially, again, we have no shift key. We've got a row of capital letters, a row of lowercase letters, you got your numbers and your characters on each side. As I noted, this is an undercarriage typewriter. So as you're typing, you cannot see what's, what's being typed. You would actually have to lift this up. Obviously the paper would be right here and you would be able to see what you, what you had just typed. Let's slide it over here. One, one of the things that's interesting about these, this early bird cage design is you cannot see, hopefully, can you kind of see the, the T there? See how that ink, that very old ink ribbon, which is very, very wide, but you can see the, the T coming up that would strike. And uh, there's why it's called an understrike. Um, this particular model, uh, for me, the uh, cable is stretched a bit. So as I type things, it does not uh, advance the carriage. But if we do this, there's your bell. rotate uh, your paper, but when I hit the space bar or any keys, it, it no longer advances. It's something I've got to try to figure out how to fix. But um, if we come around the back side here, uh, again, you kind of get a sense of uh, that bird cage. You can see here, here are the, the letters, and if I can get number letters, see the case T. Well, it's too difficult to see here, there's not enough light. But there's sort of the back side. Here's our, our serial number, uh, which is upside down for you. But for the record, it is a 1897 serial number 13854, Jewett number four. Here's the serial number upside up, I suppose. Uh, I consider this to be in very, very good shape. Uh, considering its age, it is quite, quite heavy. You can see here, Jewett Typewriter Company, Des Moines, Iowa, and their famous, the best in the world, which I believe was probably true in that time period. Um, there, there are 
um, a number of companies that were doing the uh, dual keyboards. As a matter of fact, here, give me just a second, I'll show you a couple others that I have. This is a bar lock, again, double keys. We're not really here to talk a whole lot about this uh, today. We'll do another video later, but there is a, a bar lock, and this is uh, from, I think, oh, I think 1908 or 1909. I don't remember, I have to look it up. But uh, take a look at this one. This here is a calligraph number three, and I know it's difficult to see. This is actually from 1883, but this is a double keyboard undercarriage. Again, you can see the thick uh, ink ribbon, or understrike, not undercarriage, bird carriage. Uh, this one is actually quite old. We will do a, a special video on this. I've been told there are only 10 uh, known to exist in the world, and I'm fortunate to have one. But let's get back to, uh, to the Jewett. Okay, so we're back at the Jewett, and again, uh, a lovely, lovely typewriter. Um, I'm very proud to have it in my collection. I think they are fairly rare. Um, they pop up for sale from time to time, but uh, they're certainly, I don't think very many were made, and I don't think very many have survived through the years, and certainly not in this uh, current condition. But um, for those of you that are typewriter enthusiasts, uh, this would be one that you would certainly want to have in your collection, uh, working or not working. Again, um, birdcage design, understrike. In just a few years, uh, obviously the shift key would become predominant and the typewriter as we know it uh, basically becomes the standard. But this is just early early, early typewriters. So there you have it. An ever so brief history and review, um, I don't want to bore you to death, of the Jewett number four typewriter. I encourage you to uh, dig a little deeper, crack a book, ask Google, the typewriter database. There's a number of websites out there that have a wealth of information about uh, typewriters in general, and uh, you can get very, very specific on the Jewett and the Duplex um, and any other typewriters you may be interested in. Again, uh, a very rare example uh, of, a, of a typewriter that was invented 124 years ago. Hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you learned a little something. I hope it inspires you to dig a little deeper into typewriters. Again, always check out the typewriter database on, on the internet. It is a, a wealth of information. Um, if you, I don't think this is one you can easily find on eBay. This isn't a Royale or a Smith Corona. Um, these particular models, uh, I don't think a lot were sold and even fewer have survived. But uh, I'm fortunate enough to have one. I hope you find one if that's what uh, suits your fancy. So, in this world, always remember, when you can be anything in the world you want, you be kind, you be humble, you be forgiving, and you be melting snow. Bye-bye.